Well, hello there, everybody. This is UXW Bill, and I must say that I am simply ecstatic about making this video. I'm just like a little kid in a candy store. There's no other way to put it, and I don't care if it's logical or not. But you know what? I'm so glad that some of these really cool old cars survived cash for clunkers. That's right, folks. You missed one! And don't think for a minute I'm not just simply thrilled about it. This is a 1984 Chevrolet Caprice Classic two-door. I saw this at one of the local car lots and I knew immediately, I've never driven one of these other than my dad's Cadillac, never driven one of these big old American rear-wheel drive V8s. I was definitely way late to the party. But this is one of the cars of my youth. You know, people had these things all over the place in the 1980s when I was growing up. And maybe someday I'll have one. I'm not really in the market to buy this one, and in fact it's not even officially for sale yet. But this thing is just so incredibly sweet. And it's not perfect. But for a 1984, it is in unbelievable condition. And perhaps one of the most amazing things about it, I mean, right there you can see there's a couple things that just aren't quite perfect about it. But one of the most amazing things about it, the dealership that's selling it, they say that the mileage is original. In fact, this is what they're trying to get for it. 84 Caprice Classic. It smells kind of musty in here, so I don't think it's been driven a whole lot. 4900 bucks. They said they'd take 4500 I don't really have either because of yield expensive garage back there. But they claim that those 32,055 miles and 7 tenths are completely original. The car has a cassette deck in it and a radio. Uh, the radio doesn't seem to be making a noise. The air conditioning on the car absolutely does seem to work. The uh, clock is accurate to within a couple minutes of the correct time. So the interior, you know, there's a couple spots here and there, but really for an 84, that's pretty darn clean. It's cleaner than that wagon. Let's take a look under hood. See what kind of an engine the old horse has in it. I'd imagine probably a Chevrolet 305 would be my guess. Don't know that for sure. Holy wow, is that clean. Not a lot of rust under there either. Looks like it's been converted to use 134A refrigerant. Yep, there's the retrofit notice right there. And right there, 5 liter. So this is a Chevrolet 305. Alternator looks original. In pretty good shape, really. Man, it's a big door. It's not as heavy as the one on my dad's Cadillac, but still good enough. Power locks, power windows, manual mirrors. Oh, that one's for the passenger side. A little sluggish, but not bad. Quiet. There's an automatic overdrive transmission, but I'm sorry to report it doesn't have the neat fuel gauge that the Pontiac wagon did. There's the right-hand mirror control. A little vent to cool your feet with. And there's stuff in the glove box, which I'll get to later. Just see what that air conditioner is doing under hood. It's obvious that someone took real good care of this car. I don't know that's got any reason to run right now. It was definitely running when the defroster was on, though. Pretty clean battery in it. It's pretty sweet. Let's see what the trunk looks like. All right, here's what we've got inside the glove box. Clear view anti-fog cloth from the Fuller Brush Company. Pretty neat idea if it actually works. Sam's Club, members only. Oh well. One of these things, these are worth their weight in gold. At least that's what they're priced like. Chevrolet is taking charge of taking care of you. CSSS, the Chevrolet Service Standard System. Sounds like an air leak in a tire. <laughs> Ownership documentation. Probably won't show that on the video. 
the owner's manual for the car. Tells you how to work it. This is really like the one for my 84 Sierra over there. Tells you how to do everything, what indications you've got in the dash, stuff like that. Okay, turns out there's nothing too uh, personally identifying on this. The owner never bothered to put their name or address on it, so can't know who they were. But this is the passenger car and 10 through 30 series trucks pre-delivery inspection procedure. Everything they went over, checking under the hood, body and chassis, under the vehicle, road testing it, appearance, exterior finish, basically everything on February 23rd, 1984. That is really, really cool. Yep, there's one of the things that makes it a little less than perfect. A little piece of fiberglass that rotted away. So we'll open up this uh, Chevy medallion here. Stick the keys in. Wow, is that clean. That is just absolutely incredible. A bit of rust spotting in the carpet, maybe moisture or something. A little bit of rust coming here. Light lenses are all in good shape. It's pretty sweet. I'll do a start up for you so you can hear what it sounds like. For those of you youngins who never got to see too many of these cars on the road. Suppose the horn works? Oh yeah, absolutely. Here's the startup. Conditioner never came back on. Somebody replaced the radiator cap. Power antenna works. Let's take it for a ride. Oh, there's Bizarre Furhead. He's got to wonder what I am doing with a pimp car. <laughs> hey, baby, let's race. <laughs> You'd probably win. You've got fuel injection. <laughs> I better not do that end up breaking this thing and then I might have to buy it <laughs> and I can't afford to do that let's take it for a ride I've never heard a peep out of the radio here we go it's really very quiet the suspension seems to wander a little bit, but maybe, maybe, maybe just this poor old car needs to be driven a little bit. I hope whoever ends up buying it, I wish it was me, but like I said, I simply don't have the money. And I'd be terrified to drive this thing for fear that the next idiot, or the next animal, would be right around the corner to wreck it. Let's try that power antenna. Yep. There it goes. I don't know if you can see it. It's quiet, too. Yeah, there's some wandering in the suspension. Not sure what that'd be. But it seems to have nice, good and plenty's worth of power. anybody was wondering, the Reliant Wagon's still out here on the farm, waiting its turn. The BMW got hauled off, though. I think a scrap dealer wanted to buy it, so goodbye BMW. Never even got to play with that car. Of course, it wasn't mine to play with. It belonged to uh, someone else in the family, and apparently had some kind of a fairly serious electrical problem, so not really anything I'm really interested in. BMWs don't do too much for me. I love stuff like this, so this, this is just so sweet. It's a classic, all right. <laughs> I'll get some better highway shots in here for you all. 
All right, here we go. Whoa, spun the tires a little. Be careful, you crazy UXW Bill. Interval wipers. Probably better be bringing this thing back soon. They'll probably think I've wandered off with it never to come back again. Wouldn't want them getting that idea. Set to cruise control here in just a moment as soon as I've negotiated this curve in the road. I love that hood ornament out there. All right. Hey, the cruise control works great. I need to have my foot on the gas for that. Just keeps going right down the highway. Still haven't heard anything out of the radio. Maybe I never will. Hard to tell. Me, give or take a little bit. Kind of hard to film that. <laughs> There's the power seat controls on the driver's side. Never have unlocked the passenger side. Guess I'll take a look over there. Body by Fisher. It's no Cadillac, but it's a nice old road sofa anyway. Thanks to YouTube user Moldy Mac for the term. See what's over here on the passenger side. Hard to believe I haven't opened it. Nope, no power seat for the passenger. They've got to do it all themselves. Back there in the back seat. What in the world? I moved the seat and the radio starts working. I don't believe it. <laughs> I love old cars. Well, now that we've got a radio. I have to cruise with some tunes. I'm pretty sure the record labels probably had something to do with that, though. They probably knew. They probably put a trigger in there or something. Let's see if it cuts out again. It's been doing that. Oh, I just love it. Oh, there it went. Have to get it back again. Oh, going again. Oh well, you heard it. You know it happens sometimes. I don't know, maybe there's an outboard power amp or something that isn't working quite right. I'll tell you what though, with the stability of this thing on FM broadcasting, clearly what this car radio needs is a lot more AM stereo. <laughs> I don't think GM ever did that for these radios though. I don't think that came uh, until they were doing the electronically tuned ones that are like the double DIN style or something. But this is just so sweet. This is like a lifelong dream to drive one of these nice old cars. These great old V8 rear-wheel drive American road sofas. I know, I must sound like a goofy cornball kid. But this is just so, so incredibly cool. Cash for clunkers, eat your freaking heart out. Because you didn't get them all. I hope whoever ends up owning this car will take good care of it, treat it with the respect that it deserves. I tell you what, it's rare that I say anything, in fact I never have on YouTube, but simple fact of the matter is all you folks that like those imports, you can have them. <laughs> this is the kind of car I'm going to have someday. In all seriousness, I just plain like cars. Doesn't matter foreign or domestic, but these things, they really do push my button.